Hey everybody, blessings to you. It is Pastor Ben here. I'm actually in the new island. Yesterday I was in Oahu, today I'm in Maui. So, you know, I'm just kind of like doing island hopping. Uh, I'm going to be in Maui for the next few days. So praise God, amen. Blessings to you. How you doing? How you doing? It's good to see the room fill up uh, so quickly. I know yesterday was day one, and today is day two. Someone say day two. Okay, I'm excited. Uh, so glad you're here. So glad to have you. Amen. So give me some hearts, likes, share. Praise God. Blessings, blessings. And listen, I also want you to invite some people to this private group. If you feel like uh, they'll really uh, be benefited, be encouraged from these teachings and from this private group challenge. Uh, especially at Hanukkah. Remember, when we honor the feast of God. God begins to honor us in a great, dramatic way. Amen? And so I encourage you, invite some friends, invite some haters uh, to join our group. Um, and of course, this group, uh, all throughout the year, I will continue to simultaneously change the theme of the challenges that the Lord puts on our heart to do. Amen? So blessings to you. Uh, good to see you. Good to see you. Shout out. Hello there, Sarah. Hello there, Stephanie. Good morning to you, Marina. Marina, blessings to you. And also, if you want to um, go deeper uh, you know, in mentorship with me and our ministry, you love the anointing, the DNA that our ministry carries, uh, I do have a group mentorship called 7M Glory Equip. Okay, And uh, we want to invite you uh, to our 7M Glory Equip. It's a group mentoring. I also have one-on-one -on -one mentoring uh, You know, if you would like to. Uh, you know, go deeper, uh, you know, personally in, in your leadership and your calling. <clears throat> so we also have uh, group mentoring and one-on-one -on -one mentoring. So um, praise God. I'm just going to uh, write the link here. So all of you uh, who, who love the content, who love these teachings, uh, do continue to invite people to this private group all throughout the year. We're going to continue to simultaneously change themes and challenges as uh, we feel the Lord is leading. Amen? <clears throat> and also, of course, if you want to grow deeper, <clears throat> excuse me, if you want to grow deeper uh, in the things of God, we also have a private group mentorship that you have to subscribe and be a part of. Amen? Well, um, yesterday was day one of our five-day challenge, five days of Hanukkah miracles. Some say miracles, amen? Miracles are your portion. Not misery, uh, not grime, not slime, not defeat. Miracles are your portion, amen? So, uh, again, this is a supernatural time frame. This is a week. This is a feast, a festival uh, where God shows up like never before. Hanukkah, <clears throat> as we talked about yesterday, and really, this is day two, and yesterday was day one. And yesterday in day one, I gave a foundation, I laid out the foundation, and I laid out uh, the introduction of what Hanukkah is. Remember, Jesus himself celebrated Hanukkah. Hanukkah is also mentioned in the Bible. So if something's mentioned in the Bible, don't you think it's important to understand? And not only that, but Jesus himself celebrated Hanukkah. Okay, Hanukkah in Hebrew is known as dedication or rededication. And also Hanukkah, one of the other words or names for Hanukkah is the festival of lights. Okay, So Jesus himself celebrated Hanukkah, the festival of lights. You can find that in John 10, 22. Okay? So Hanukkah is, is not one of the seven feasts of God. Okay, We understand in the book of Deuteronomy, <clears throat> God commands the Israelites. Here are seven feasts. These are time portals. Some say time portals. Or these are open windows of divine appointments. We call it the appointments of God, okay? Because when you have an appointment with God, you don't want to miss it, do you? 
When God sets an appointed time for you, you don't want to miss it. And so these appointed times and seasons are feasts. There's seven all throughout the Hebrew calendar, the Hebrew year. Um, uh, Passover, tabernacles, uh, 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 trumpets, uh, uh, leaven, uh, the Feast of Unleavened Bread, uh, Pentecost, uh, Yom Kippur, the Day of Atonement. Uh, so there's seven different feasts all throughout the year. Um, however, uh, Hanukkah is not one of the seven feasts. Many people call it the eighth feast, okay? Even though it's not mandated as the seven covenantal feasts of God appointed times, many people liken it to be the eighth, okay? And, uh, of course, uh, go figure that Hanukkah uh, actually took place for eight days. So it is actually an eight-day celebration, an eight uh, days feast and festival. Are you following me? Um, and again, uh, the back story of Hanukkah is that uh, a group of Maccabees rose up while they were being constituted by Governor Newsom and Pelosi while they were being constituted, um, dictated by the Hasmonean Empire. And the Hasmonean Empire was taking away their rights, their freedom, desecrated the temple, which I'm going to talk about um, on Thursday, about cleansing your temple and taking back your temple. Amen. Um, but... Uh, a group called the Maccabees stood up, rose up uh, against the tyranny, and there was a three-year war, okay, for freedom. Some say freedom. There was a three-year war for freedom. However, in midst of the three years, there was an eight-day battle, and this is where, and you follow me now, this is where Hanukkah, the miracle of Hanukkah, took place in this eight-day battle within this three-year war of revolt, revolution, and rebellion against the system and the ways of the day. There was an eight-day battle. Uh, during this battle, the people only had one day's worth of oil. Now imagine, uh, it's, it's dark in the night, you know, we're so blessed and privileged. We have electricity, we have sunlight, moonlight, all these things. But imagine... Uh, in the dark of the night and while you're going to war, while you are in battle, you only have one day's worth of oil. The enemy is uh, extremely uh, more advanced than you are. Uh, they are the greatest, most powerful, most malicious uh, army, military, and all the earth. And here you are, you're just ragtag guerrillas, ragtag guerrilla warfare bandits. Uh, you know, uh, revolting, standing up, you know, with, in a sense, butter knives and, and bread knives, while they have the most articulative uh, arsenal in all of human history. And, and all you have is one day's worth of oil to light up so that you can have vision. Some say vision. So you can have vision and you can see what's happening in the middle of the night as you are in battle. One day's worth. Some say one day's. However, because God was on their side, I feel a preach of my spirit, because God was on their side, the Holy Spirit anointed and supernaturally multiplied one day's worth of oil. It began to last to second, to day two. It lasted to day three. It supernaturally manifested and multiplied to day four, day five, day six, day seven, to day eight, until... They defeated their enemies in that eight-day battle. Some say, Amen. What was meant to last for one day, supernaturally manifested and multiplied to eight days. How is that humanly possible? It's not. God will do the impossible. I said, God will multiply you. God will supernaturally multiply you, your finances, your faith. He will multiply every area and part of your life. And this is one of the great miracles of Hanukkah. This is one of the great miracles of Hanukkah because there was multiplication until they won the battle and they defeated their enemies. Someone say amen. 
So tomorrow I'm going to talk about victory over your mind and your soul. And on Thursday, I'm going to believe for healing miracles in your body, in your loved ones. Uh, really, for the last few weeks, we've been seeing an increase of miracles. I don't know about you, but I've been seeing an increase of miracles, like miracles and miracles. I told you, my prophetic word of the month for December was December is a month of miracles, mega miracles, ridiculous miracles, just filthy miracles, r rich miracles. Like, you're going to get sick and tired of miracles because you're going to swim and live in miracles. It's just... Uh, you know, shakarakatarabroska. And part of the reason why is because uh, Hanukkah is a feast of miracles. Amen. But remember, people of God, right now we are in the month of Kislev, okay, which means flank and side swipe, full. And then tomorrow, Wednesday, we actually start a new Hebrew month called Tevet. Someone say Tevet. And Tevet comes from the root word Tov. <laughs> and Tov in Hebrew means good. So we're stepping tomorrow, we're entering Tevet, which is a month where good overcomes evil. The goodness of God overcomes all corruption, all injustice, all wickedness. That month starts tomorrow. And so Hanukkah is a festival where it's actually in the middle of two months. I believe, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, i got to do my studies, that no other feast is actually in between two different Hebrew calendars a month. So we're stepping into a month where good will overcome evil in your life. The goodness of God will overcome all your sadness, all your sorrows, the goodness of God will overcome all of your burdens. The goodness of God will break every yoke in Jesus' name. Amen. So, imagine this. You have one day's worth of oil. How great would your visibility or your vision, your light be? Now you have two. Boom, look at that. See, I have, I have three lights there. You have one, and there's only a limited range. Hear me now. There's a limited range, something limited range. But now you have two. Now there's a, boom, a greater range. Now you have three. Boom, now there's an even greater and stronger and brighter range. You have four. Boom, you have five. Boom, you have six. Boom, you have seven. Boom, you have eight. Boom. God is about to give you greater vision, greater visibility. God is going to increase your revelation. So this is the week and season of revelation. Some say revelation. Shoo. Here's the thing. If, if I am one candle and we, you know, one candle. Listen, you're not meant to be a little candlestick. You're meant to be a bonfire. But too many people are lone rangers. So therefore, they are never effective in their life, in their ministry. But when you come together as the batch of God, that you have greater fire, greater burning, greater presence, greater miracles. You follow me? Are you getting this? So many people are ineffective because they're just single. They're alone. They're lone rangers. But when you come together in a cluster, there's a greater glory that happens. Remember, if you only have one single grape and you're crushed, you'll become grape juice. But if you have a whole cluster of grapes and it's crushed together, boom, you get wine. You get the new wine. Some say amen. Amen. So God is increasing. Um, God is increasing your revelation. Okay, but, uh, remember Hanukkah is the last uh, feast of God before we enter into the new Gregorian year, 2021. That's why it's so important that you and I embrace this feast, this festival, uh, with uh, sober-mindedness. And we actually understand the revelation and the realm that opens up. I know many of you, you've been feeling a shift. 
the last few days. Why? Because this is the feast of God. This is an appointed time of heaven. So, somebody said, oh, uh, Hanukkah's eight days. Yeah, but I felt to do five days, okay, because I, I don't have time to do eight days live every single day for eight days. Uh, but the Lord to do five and do this week. Why? Because as the days go on, it becomes brighter and brighter and stronger and stronger. Remember, Revelation is progressive, which means some of you cannot tap into the glory because you have not yet tapped into the anointing. Some of you cannot tap into the anointing because you have not tapped into faith. You have not tapped into faith yet because you have not yet tapped into grace. Does that make sense? It's like a child. You're a newborn. You're a baby. Now you're an elementary. Now you're a teenager. It's progressive, which means as the days go on, the glory increases. The power increases. Angels begin to gather even more. Victory increases. Courage increases. Your authority begins to increase. Hey, Catherine, blessings to you. Your authority begins to increase. Your, your value begins to increase as the days go on. You follow me? So, in these eight days, uh, literally, in, in this five days of Hanukkah miracles, this Facebook Challenges group, in the five days, as you continue on with me, your life is going to be changed. I guarantee it. I, I wouldn't do anything. I wouldn't teach anything if I didn't believe that there was a realm of God and the leading of the Holy Spirit um, on this. Now, I know a lot of people are, are celebrating Hanukkah, but they're not doing a challenge like we are. So some say amen. So your one day's worth of oil manifested into eight days until you defeated the enemy. I'm telling you. Uh, miss y'all too in the family. I'm telling you guys. Uh, God is about to release multiplication in your life. Alright. Don't despise the day of small beginnings. Do not despise the day of small, humble beginnings. Because if you're faithful, say faithful. If you're faithful, God will multiply to much more. He will give you the much more. He will, all right, seek first the kingdom and his righteousness. And all these things will be added unto you. I love what Bill Johnson says. He says, many people stress and applaud the seek first the kingdom. But when much more is added unto you, they despise you. So be faithful, be grateful for what the one day is worth. Listen, you may be saying, Pastor Ben, all I have is $50 in my bank account. Woo, I feel the Holy Ghost right now. You might be saying, Pastor Ben, all I got is, you know, this amount of energy. All I have is a few friends. I don't even have no friends, Pastor Ben. But, but the fact that you have a little does not discount you. The fact that you have a tiny bit, the faith of a mustard seed, does not discount you at all. Be faithful and grateful with the little that you do have. And watch God multiply it. Watch God bless it. Watch God increase it. Someone say amen. God's about to do it. Woo, I feel the Holy Ghost. Wow, wow, wow. Someone say, I receive my multiplication. Shabba babosa. <laughs> By the way. In order for me to do these lives while I'm in Hawaii, I have to wake up every day at 6 a.m. It's, it's about 8.30 here now. That's so much. I love you and I love this. I wake up every day at 6 a.m. to do this. Instead of swimming and snorkeling and going at the beach. The Lord is my reward. Someone said multiplication. Multiplication. The little that you have, don't despise it. Who am I talking right? I feel like I'm talking to somebody right. Don't despise the little that you have. You may not be where you want to be. But thank God we're not where we used to be. You may not have all that you want. You may not have all that you desire. Even as we're closing 2020, you may not 
have achieved all the goals and accomplishments that you thought you would. But God will multiply you. He will cause you to expand and increase before the end of this year. In this Hanukkah season, I declare it, I decree it. You will not end this Hanukkah season. You will not end this year, December, without the spirit of multiplication in your life. Someone say amen. Now let's go to, over to some scripture. Let's go over to some scripture. I love this. Do you know the mandate of multiplication was in the first book of Genesis? Really? Was in the book of Genesis. Genesis 128. Genesis 128. God blessed them and said to them, Be fruitful and increase in number. Fill the earth and subdue it. And remember, the reason why I'm teaching this about the realm of multiplication today is because I'm believing that the little that you have is going to multiply. I'm believing that in the same way that the Maccabees only had one day's worth of oil, it's supernaturally multiplied to eight. Whatever you give to God, He will bless and multiply. I'm believing for that. In your finances, your influence, your dream life, your prophetic anointing, every area of your life. Genesis 1.28, God blessed them and said to them, Be fruitful and increase in number. Other translations such as the English Standard Version says, Multiply. Be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth and subdue it and have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air. Someone say multiply. Now that word multiply in Hebrew is Rabbah. Someone say Rabbah. Someone say it is my Rabbah season. It is my season to Rabbah. Rabbah. Sorry, I'm feeling really goofy today. That means I'm, I'm really happy. <laughs> it's my season to Rabbah. Which means to become much, many or great. It means that you are growing into greatness. You're becoming many, you're becoming numerous. Something numerous. So that word Rabbah means to become great in number. To become great in, uh, in stature. Okay? Someone say, I am becoming great. Someone say, I am great in the eyes of God. So, it's the Genesis mandate of the garden. Someone say garden. It's the garden mandate for you to rabbah, for you to become great. It's the Genesis mandate for you to rabbah, to increase in greatness. You follow me? Okay. Now, uh, we're, we're going to fast forward here. I love the story uh, of all of Acts, okay? Of course, in the book of Acts, if we read, it's the first church in the book of Acts. Uh, literally, uh, they start, uh, the Bible says that, they, that many were added on daily, okay? But there's a realm, as you keep reading the book of Acts, it goes from many were added to multiplied, okay? There, there's a contingency. I, I, I'm a preacher, I feel the Holy Ghost. There's, there's a time in your life where you're being added on, added on, added on. You can literally count it with your hands, with, with your fingers. You can count it. You know, uh, it, it's, it's being added on. But all of a sudden, you, you overflow. You step into the realm of multiplication. All of a sudden, boom, it just begins to have exponential growth. It begins to multiply. There's multiple streams of income. It just begins to cross-pollinate and break off into little streams and little things. Just boom, 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 boom. It just multiplies rapidly. In the book of Acts, we see that the church, they were being added on daily for a number of years. And then it overflowed into the realm of multiplication. I'm telling you, revival fire is going to spread out. It's, uh, it's going to spread out like wild, mad revi revival fire. There's a time in your life where things are added on. Why? Because... Uh, it takes time. You know, it, it, it's like there's a scientific law. It takes time uh, for the right core. And all of a sudden, 
as I make a disciple of two, as two people make a disciple of two people each. And as those two, as those, uh, what is that? I can't even do math. As those eight people make disciples of two each, boom, boom, boom. And now what do you get? You get a multi-level marketing company. Now what do you get? You get herbal life. <laughs> so Acts chapter 12, verse 24. Acts 12, 24. The Bible here says, but the word of God continued to grow and to multiply. Someone say multiply. The word of God continued to grow and to multiply. That word multiply in the Greek is plethuno. Someone say plethuno. To multi the church grew and plethuno. The word of God continued to grow. And plethuno, wherever the word of God is, there's plethuno, which means a multiplication. And that word plethuno means to be made full to your maximum capacity. To be made full, to increase and multiply to your maximum capacity. That word plethuno comes from the root word plethos, which means great number, multitude, crowd, and the assembly. My gosh. I pray that God will plethuno you. God will grow you in numbers. Multiply you. You know, a few months ago, I know during this pandemic, a lot of people are suffering. Uh, a lot of people are scared. I don't know why. A lot of Christians are really just being exposed for the lack of faith that they have and how they, they put their faith in the wrong thing. But during this pandemic, maybe about three months ago, uh, the Lord began speaking to me saying, son. You, you never have to worry about your numbers or about your money again. And again, of course, I've received prophetic words like this throughout the years from many great men and women of God. But just a few months ago, the Lord said, you never have to worry about your numbers in the crowd, in your church services, in your meetings, or your numbers in your finances ever again. And I knew in my spirit, that we hit something in the spirit realm. I knew in the spirit that we broke through something. And there's a time in your life where you know you broke through in the spirit realm. <laughs> and I'm telling you people of God, God is about to multiply the good thing that he's doing in your life. Okay, why would you want to multiply your sin? Why would you want to multiply your failures and your insecurity. God's about to multiply the good thing that he's doing in your life. And as a testament, I just want to speak to you. Um, all of you <laughs> wonderful intercessors <laughs> watching right now. As a testament, God will make you a great nation. God will, will make your name great in all the earth. God will turn you into a father and a mother of nations. God will multiply. It's inevitable. It's inevitable. So keep doing great. Keep doing good. Keep keep being faithful. Someone said multiply. Someone said it is my season to plethuno. It is my season to rabbah. Rabbah. It's my season to rabbah. It's my season to plethuno. We know the story in Matthew 14, 13, and 21. When Jesus feeds the 5,000. Amen. I love the story. My gosh. At verse 15, Matthew 14, 15. As evening approached, the disciples came to him and said, This is a remote place. And it's already getting late. Like some of you feel like you're stranded out in the middle of nowhere. 
and your time is up. Like you're getting older, your clock is ticking, you're worried about getting married, you, you feel like you're useless, you feel like, and you know what? And usually in this year-end season, there's about a 15% increase of depression that happens in the December season. I remember years ago, well, and I don't, I don't know why I'm sharing so much purple stuff, but I remember years ago, um, around December time, I really felt alone. And I really felt, in a sense, unloved. And I just, you know, I felt like I was alone. You know, you would, you would look at these movies and scroll on Instagram and look at all these hallmark, picture-perfect families celebrating together. And, and I looked at that and I, and, I, and I coveted that. And I was jealous of that. And, you know, because I never had that. I, I didn't really have that. And, uh, you know, I didn't have the means to uh, enjoy the Christmas season and the times with the right people that I wanted. And so a lot of times around December, you know, I felt alone and I felt sad, but of course I pressed into the Lord. Um, but then in this time of December, it's recorded that there's a 15% increase of depression amongst, happy, uh, amongst people uh, around this year and time because their loved ones have passed, maybe their widows, uh, maybe their children have grown up, uh, you know, uh, may, maybe you just ugly, no, I'm kidding, maybe nobody just likes you, uh, but, uh, you know, and so uh, a lot of people, you know, feel alone, and they feel lonely, and they fall into depression and suicide, um, so anyways, here, Matthew 14, 15, as evening approached, the disciples came to him and said, this is a remote place. Do you, do you feel like you are in a remote controller place? Do you feel like you are in a remote place? And it's already getting late and it's getting late. Nobody understands you. You're all alone. You have no clue. You don't know where you're going. You're lost. You feel dark, gloomed, and doomed. You feel like you're just all alone. And Jesus says, send the crowds away so they can go to the uh, and. And uh, the disciples say, send the crowds away, Jesus, so they could go to the villages and buy themselves some food. Jesus replied, verse 16, they do not need to go away. Hear this. Don't go away from me. Don't go away from me. And he says, you give them something to eat. And they said, we only have five loaves of bread and two fish. Five loaves of bread and two fish. Jesus says, don't go away from me. Don't go away from me. Five loaves and two fish. Verse 18. Bring them here to me. Bring the little that you have to me. Bring the little that you have to me. And he directs the people to sit down on grass. This is a Psalm 23 anointing where Jesus becomes a shepherd. He directs them to sit down on grass. Come on. And he takes the five loaves and the two fish. And looking up to heaven. My gosh. I feel the Holy Ghost. He gives thanks and he breaks the loaves. Then he gave them to the disciples and the disciples gave them to the people. As they continued to give, it, they continued to give. Whatever you give will supernaturally multiply. Whatever you, you give thanks to the Lord and you give to people will multiply. Who am I talking to right now? If you hold it to yourself, if you hoard it like that one uh, like the servant who had one talent and the servant buried it in the ground. If you hoard it to yourself, if you hold it back for yourself, then it will die. It will not have life. But if you give it away, it will multiply. If you give it away, it will begin to expand. Whatever you give away will multiply. Whatever you hold back for yourself will die. Remember, the, the person who was faithful with two talents gained two cities. Five talents gained five cities. That's a multiplication there. A lot of scholars have said, what is a talent? It, it can't be denarii. It can't be gold. It can't be treasure silver. That talent has to be people. Because people are the most valuable assets uh, on planet Earth in the universe. 
So if you're faithful with five people, then I will give you access to five cities. It's all about people, people of God. Whatever you hold back for yourself, it will die. But whatever you give away, it will multiply. And they all ate and they were satisfied. And the disciples picked up 12 basketfuls of broken pieces that were left over. And the number of those was about 5,000 besides the women and children. 5,000 men. Think about that. Men. 5,000 wild Jewish men. Now that would have been a stanky show. Stanky. That would have been stanky. But imagine 5,000 rugged agriculture farmer men really hulky yeah and not only that but their children and their women and if they had kids and wives they probably brought their donkeys and their goats and they probably brought their livestock with them too but out of five loaves and two fish do not despise the small that you have People of God, don't despise the small joy that you have. You, you may say, well, Pastor Ben, you know, look at you. Look at these people I follow on Facebook. They're all so fake. Oh, Pastor Ben, uh, look at all these people. It looks like they live such a great life. I only got this little thing. I only got, you know, I only got uh, my cat that loves me. I only have my dog that loves me. But look, Pastor Ben, look at all these people. It looks like they're, they're living their life. Don't despise the little that you have. Five loaves and two fish. The Bible says, he gave thanks and he broke it. Give thanks for, lo for what you have. Give thanks, people of God. Praise God, amen. I, I'm thankful for the 37 viewer, live viewers right now. I'm thankful for this Facebook challenge, I know we didn't really promote it or do much on it. So it seems like there's been a little less activity because we've been dormant on this group. But I'm thankful. Shoot, I'm thankful I'm in Maui. Let, let, me, let me show you my view right here. Look at that. Y'all see that? I'm thankful I'm in Maui. Oh my gosh, I'm thankful. And I'm thankful to be alive. I'm thankful that I'm not bald. I'm thankful... You know, that I got good clothes to wear. That I, that God has anointed me to be a voice. That You know, that I actually have a voice that I can use. Although it may be raspy a lot. Because I'm always talking and preaching and yelling and shouting. But thank God. Amen. Thank the Holy Spirit. Shut up. Whatever you give to God and give thanks for, God will multiply. If you're not thankful for something, He will take it away from you. He will gladly take it away from you. If you're not thankful for something, He will take it away from you. You follow me? Multiplication. There's a time in your life where things go from adding on to multiplication. Now, of course, we know the story of the widow's mites. The prophet speaks to the widow and says, what do you have? And the widow says, I only have this little jar of oil. And the prophet says, go and collect jars, empty jars, vases from everybody. I know I'm prophesying to you right now. Go and collect empty jars, vases from your neighbors all around. And the amount that you collect... I will fill. Hear me now. The organizations that you start, I will fill. The businesses that you start, I will fill. The rooms that you build, I will fill. Whatever you expand into, I will fill. You need to have the vessel so I can give you the rain. You need to have the field so that I can bless you with the rain. You need to expand and you need to open up so that I can bless you. And the oil begins to multiply. Someone say multiply. Multiply, multiply, multiply. I pray that God will multiply your one day's worth of oil. 
I pray that God will multiply that one disciple, that one team member that you have. I pray that God will multiply the little that you have. Don't despise it. Be grateful. So, in closing today, I'm going a lot longer than I am. Might be because I'm, I'm tired. <laughs> I'm just kind of rambling on in the glory. But I want to challenge you with this. 2 Kings chapter 4, verse 3. Go and borrow. Number one, go. Someone say go. Go and borrow empty containers from everybody. Other translations say go and collect. Come on, tax collectors. Come on, IRS. Go and get. Get. Go and get empty containers from everybody, from all your neighbors. Don't just get a few. Don't just get smoke. Then go in and shut the door behind you and your sons and pour oil into all these containers. Guess what? The oil didn't stop because the oil ran out. The oil stopped because the containers ran out. The oil only stops. Hear me now. The oil only stops when your container runs out. The oil only stops when you tell them to stop. This is bottomless, people of God. This is bottomless. The things of God are bottomless. Come on. I know some of you like your bottomless mimosas. This is bottomless. Okay. It doesn't stop unless you have stopped, unless you tell it to stop. Wow. One day's worth of oil. And of course, what, what, did, what did the widow do? The widow took all of the oil, the containers, vessels of oil that she had. And remember, oil is a commodity. Okay, Oil, especially back in the day. Okay, Listen, they didn't have a lotion. Okay, They had oil. Okay, Listen, some of you are all ashy. Okay, Use some oil, some cocoa butter, some shea butter. Some oil, some argon oil, okay? Olive oil. All right, use some oil, all right? You you ashy people. But remember, they didn't have oil, so oil preserved and healed, okay? All that cracked skin, oil preserves, okay? Oil is a commodity. Oil preserves the food that healed people's bodies, all right? Nobody likes to hold hands with, anyways. <laughs> oil is a commodity. And the oil is the Holy Spirit. The oil is the Holy Ghost. God is saying, as many people you bring to me, I will fill them with the Holy Spirit. As many people you gather in my name, I will fill them. Fill them with the substance of God that prospers, that causes you to succeed, to overcome, to be established. Hallelujah. And of course, the widow, she had a financial debt. Like some of you watching right now, you have financial debt. You know, I'm so blessed. I'm so blessed. You know, last year I had a $60,000 ministry debt last year. Because people stole money from me in Africa and Mexico. So last year I had $60,000 ministry debt. As a young man, you know, I, I made some poor choices by trusting in the wrong people, etc. I had $60,000 in ministry debt. I had $30,000 in personal debt. All right. Uh, majority of it was from my school debt, of course. And also uh, my own small personal debt. But last year, we saw that $90,000 debt paid off. Paid off. That's the favor of God. And now I am debt free, 100%. Our ministry is debt free. I'm debt free. And God wants to cancel debts. I'm telling you, I've seen in my life. I've it's, it's, these testimonies are just ridiculous. It's, I'm getting and hearing testimonies like this 
almost on a weekly basis from our church, from from people around me, people that are connected to our ministry. It's just God is prospering people. It's it's mad. It's wild. But remember the oil that multiplied, it paid off all the debt that the widow had. And I'm believing for you in this Hanukkah season, in this five days of Hanukkah miracles, I'm believing that any financial debt will be destroyed in your life. I'm believing that God will multiply you. He will multiply your finances. He will increase. Remember, one day's worth of oil multiplied into eight, which means altogether the revelation grew, the power grew, the glory grew, the finances grew, the, uh, the church grew daily. They multiplied, they plethuno, they increased the number and authority. Some would say, it is my rock. My rabbi season. It is my season to rabbi. I want to pray for you today. For multiplication. You feel like you have a little. You feel like you have less. You're comparing yourself to others on social media. To your family members. You feel like all you have is a little. Pastor Ben. All I have is my dog. I don't even have a man. I don't even have a, a girlfriend. All I have is my little puppy. And I need to hold him and, and kiss him. Because nobody else kisses me. Thank God for the little. And he will multiply it into much more. Thank God for what you have. And like Jesus, he multiplied it and he gave it away. And as he gave it away, it began to multiply it and feed thousands. That's the realm of multiplication. You give thanks and you give it away. Father, I pray for my people right now. I pray that you will multiply them, even with the miracle of Hanukkah. Even with the miracle of Hanukkah. That you multiply the oil. One day's worth of oil. Imagine you're in a battle fighting against the most uh, weaponized, the most prestige, the most powerful military group. And you're this ragtag group. And you have a revolution, Mexico. And you have this... And you're going against it, but you only have one day's worth of oil until, and it begins to multiply until you defeat them all. God will multiply all that you need until you have full victory in your life. Lord, I pray for my friends watching, for debt cancellations, medical bills to be canceled, school bills to be canceled, mortgage bills to be paid off. I pray, Father, in, the, in this realm right now, there's actually a real strong realm of glory right now. The glory of God is here right now. <laughs> and in the realm of glory, things are multiplied. Things are accelerated. Things happen quickly. In the, in the presence of His glory, things accelerate. Things happen supernaturally. So Lord, I pray for the realm of glory to invade their space. The realm of glory to invade. The little that you have, the small that you have, don't despise it. God will multiply it. And he will use your life to bless many. Be fruitful and multiply. Be fruitful and multiply. I prophesy now that God will so increase you in finances that you will set others free from debt. The Bible says be a lender, not a borrower. God will multiply you so much in the realm of finances. That he will use you to set the captives free. That he will use you to pay forward other people's bills. He will use you to cancel other people's debts. Jesus. I pray that God will multiply you. So that you can be a father and a mother in this generation. That is the miracle of Hanukkah, people of God. People of God, thanks for joining me today. This is day two of Hanukkah Miracles. Day two of five days of Hanukkah Miracles. Uh, remember, watch yesterday. is day one. I gave you a solid introduction of Hanukkah. Why we celebrate it. Why it is an appointed time. All right. And today, of course, they did day two of Hanukkah Miracles. Uh, five days of Hanukkah Miracles. Talking about the spirit and the realm of multiplication. And tomorrow is day three of 
five days of Hanukkah miracles that I'm going to talk about uh, victorious mindset, okay? But I want you to comment below uh, if something blessed you, if something ministered to you, something really spoke to you. If you learned something new today, I want you to comment below. And I'm telling you, get ready for multiplication. Amen. This is Pastor Ben. See you tomorrow, 10 a.m. PST.